Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you on another Let's Play episode of Far Beyond the World. So a little brief update, real quick. Um, so you, I know a lot of you came to my channel from back in the day when I uh, started posting all about Psychic Connections. Well, <laughs> Psychic Connections is apparently coming back in August, and I am oh so excited. Oh my goodness! Really, one of the one of the videos that really kickstarted the interest in my channel. Um, God. Oh my God! I, I just oh my God! I can't wait. Um, when the game is in 1.0, what I'll do is I'll do a, f a fresh playthrough, and then I will. Uh, of course, I'm going to keep covering the game as it gets updated. But when it hits 1.0, what I'll do is uh, I'll do a fresh playthrough and I'll run a poll about which uh, best boy you guys want me to do in that playthrough, and we'll take it from there. But anyway, guys, let's jump right back in Ugh, and experience the awful elders. Alarm chain, you're up. Oh Lord, please get, let me get through this. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I reply uncertainly, getting lost in their conversation. <laughs> suppose, <clears throat> suppose for a moment it's not a raid, though. Suppose Vortigan very much is eyeing out other tribes. They seem to be worried about someone called Vortigern. Do you know who that is? All of Tiernan knows who he is. He's an ambitious wolven chief from the north and very bad news for everyone. If they're actually worried about him, things are worse than I thought. But this changes everything. The bunny ponders, his expression beaming with determination. But what does? You understanding them. Look, I know we get off on the wrong foot. My people are always the ones to pay the price in any conflict. His voice is almost pleading. If you hear anything indicating that my people might be in danger, you must tell me. Of course. I nod. This was never in question. Trist simply smiles and passes me the spit. It's quite heavier now that three chickens weigh it down. Go in there and rotate it slowly. It'll give you an excuse to listen on. I nod and do exactly as told. What the voice Dran? Which one is Dran? Which one is Dran? Aldris. Okay, Dran, okay. Well, if that's the case, it was only a matter of time. Oh, God, what... Oh. What is it? Thirty years since the last tribal war? I should know. Vither grumbles in annoyance, poking at one of his scars. Would have been just twenty had your father had his way. The female waves at the chief as I carefully install the prong back into the hearth and begin slowly turning the slowly turning the handle. So this is your counsel. Do nothing. Last time you took drastic action, we all paid the price. Perhaps now you will listen to your elders. Caution isn't the same as an action. When facing the threat of war, sometimes the best response is not to draw your sword, but rather reach for the quill. I notice the chief and Vithyr exchange exasperated gazes. So you are the peacekeepers now. His tone is so cynical that it makes me even doubt their true motives. Yes, we are. And if you claim to be so interested in peace, I don't understand your tardiness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> When is Maeve going to arrive? Both wolves are of age now. We should move as fast as possible. Huh? Which wolves? I quite agree. This alliance was decades in the making. We can't let current circumstance sow any doubt in Eokane's mind. His firstborn... His firstborn is a prize in her own right. You're willing to let her slip through your fingers? She should be here around the equinox. The chief waves dismissively. That late? Why not, now? The lover's moon would have been an auspicious sign to seal the deal. And perhaps even make them truly bond. I have a nagging feeling they're discussing Rannick and his intended, and I feel as if a rock formed inside my stomach. Oh, I, I dozed off again. What, the, what did I miss? The ancient female stirs up. I almost forgot she was even there. We're talking about Maeve. Oh, good. Some porridge or a pudding, perhaps. I was getting quite peckish. <laughs> Maeve, not Maze. What is the matter with you? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was working. I thought it was a working luncheon. You're becoming quite annoying. The old male snarls, and I try my hardest to look completely clueless. But it's becoming quite a challenge. Rushing this match would make us look desperate. I don't want the other tribes to think we're weak. Especially now, having the human here made us look like fools to begin with. Vithyr draws their attention to me, and again, the old wolves give me nasty gazes. 
Just smile and turn, smile and turn. Round and round the spit it goes. Which reminds me, how did we manage to get past our... How did he manage to get past our patrols? Did you punish anyone? Like who? We don't even know which of the sentries failed. If the human is here, then they all failed. Should have selected any wolf and simply made an example out of him. Should have killed that mongrel as well. Damn, Trish wasn't kidding. Those two are absolutely horrible. In my time... Your time never came, old she-wolf. So you're barking under the wrong tree. Do we really need to have this talk during a meal? All those calls for blood make me lose my appetite. A discreet smile escapes me. Vithyr is such a good wolf. I guess the Tiggery really did rub off on him. This is not a silly matter, pup. In case your eyes went along with your smile mind, with your Cena smile mind, with your Cena mind, I am no pup. I haven't been called one in quite some time. Impertinent! Please, keep at least some level of decorum. The other kin are watching. The chief growls, pointing to me and Trist, who's now arranging small plates with cold meats around the table. Then ask them to turn around and face the walls. Now. Now, really? The male scoffs, clearly finding the comment distasteful. Have, have they been here this whole time? An elf points to us, darting her eye, very confused eyes between me and the bunny. I guess the others did not deign to entertain her question. In any case, if Eo, if any, in any case, if Eo Man changes his mind, Rannick can have my girl. The two of them are getting along quite well. I was right then. Maeve is Rannick's intended. Don't be obscene. Your relationship with the chief is incestuous as it is. Ether coughs up his wine, as he was just about to take a sip. Yes, Vithyr, don't be incestuous. The chief elbows his friend teasingly, but it seems only to aggravate the elders even more. If you lose that match, you'll lose the alliance that comes with it. <laughs> Who's talking about losing it? I'm just saying that the boy won't have to go without a mate for long should the worst come to pass. The females are practically queuing up for the fucker. Vithyr raises his cup towards the chief, and the male laughs back at him with clear pride in his voice. <laughs> Do you really think that we don't see your little game? That we would allow you two to accumulate enough power to tackle us head-on, you defective whelp? I could tackle you right here, right now, old man. The brown wolf stands up for the and for the first time. I see his muzzle show very clear, show very little cheer or levity. And you're going to allow him to disrespect us like this? Since my memory doesn't fail me, I can recall who was first to throw insults. The chief speaks slowly, making sure they understand the gravity of the situation. I'm going to brush it off to a heated exchange, unless you want to stand by your baseless accusations. It would be a shame having to end the day with a duel for Vithyr's satisfaction. First time I notice Aldris's eyes filled with something other than spite. She darts her worried gaze between determined, muzzle, between determined muzzles of both quarries and pats her friend on the shoulder. Heated exchange! N nothing else! Right, Dran? Heated, indeed. The old geezer concedes reluctantly. Would he really be so petty to throw his life away had, he, had she not intervened? Vithyr would make minced meat out of him. You have lots to learn. The hag throws a nasty gaze towards the brown wolf. The mockery and contemptuous attitude you display is unbecoming of your position. The title of Varric's advisor should have gone to a true wolf of merit, not a simple-minded brute. A brute? Vithyr is the sweetest wolf I've met so far, not counting Rannick, of course. I was the top alpha of my generation, she-wolf. Every scar on my body is a badge of merit. That's right, man. You put that bitch in her place. He points to as many wounds as he takes his seat back. What were you? A den mother and a friend over there? Yeah, a den mother and your friend over there? A glorified quill pusher? Don't you talk to me about merit. Preposterous! And now, care to weigh in? Why you're dragging her into this? Is it because she accomplished more in her lifetime than the two of you combined? How dare you! Now it's the old timer who raises up from rises up from his seat. An owl. Oh, I'm sorry. I was miles away. I was thinking it would be such a joy to have some nice fruit punch. It has gotten tremendously hot in here. She fans her paw at her face, and she as she gazes towards the fire. 
At first, they're both stumped, but the old male quickly exhales heavily and throws his anchored stare at us. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Forgive me, guys. I am... I am, uh, yawn. It is nighttime when I'm recording this. Mm -hmm. Hugh, Bunny, teach Pig how to... Teach Pig how to serve. He growls nastily, redirecting all his anger at me. What a coward, picking on the easiest prey. I follow Tristan to the pantry, seeing the bunny nearly seething. Uh, not only... Not only they butcher our kin, they also butcher our language. As we enter the chamber, I watch the bunny scatter about, bringing all different ingredients together. What's that noise? Oh. Kitty meowing. The whole conversation got me extremely worried, and you weren't kidding. Those two are horrible... <laughs> horrible guns. <laughs> oh my god. The bunny chuckles, looking at me with a first genuinely friendly expression. <laughs> they are, aren't they? I don't want you two to be like, no, stop that. He laughs it off as he grabs a large pitcher and fills it up with some dried fruit. Pitch that flagon. There should be some merry wine left. I nod and uncork the bottle. I take a quick sniff and savor the lovely sweet aroma. Rennick told me that the meeting to save my life took, took day and night on their account. I mutter as Trish pours the wine into the pitcher. It would have driven me insane having to listen to those two. I should know. I've been there. It almost descended into a fistfight several times. I frown, passing him different containers he points to. Be happy it's just the two of them. There's more elders? Of course. He scoffs at, he scoffs at my, in retrospect, silly question. Most of them live remotely, though, spread across the territory. It's just a handful that lives near the village. And among them, these two. I wince uncomfortably. Yeah. I have to concede, Eldris and Dran are the worst of the bunch. They are! Vithyr seems like such a good wolf, it amazes me they're edging him, like, edging him on like this. They respect no one. I might not have my memories, but I'm sure they'd be on top of the list of nastiest people I've ever met. From the way the bunny prepares the punch, it very much looks like sangria, just with dried fruit and spices. He had some lemongrass and mint as well, and truth, this does seem like a nice drink. I need to quickly check on the chickens before they burn. All I need you to do is to simply add a splash of moonshine and stir it in. Okay. I nod as he passes me a small jar filled with a familiar clear liquid. He then hastily rushes to the main hall. I watch the doors curiously as I hear the elders immediately abuse the crap out of the bunnies he enters their line of sight. Which one is Aldrisk? Oh yeah, Aldrisk, okay. Where's the damn punch, you lazy bastard? If he was my attendant, I would have whipped some life into his step. The remark causes my hands to tremble as I open the jar. I accidentally drop. As I open the jar, I accidentally drop it whole into the pitcher. Shit! I gasp, almost dipping my fingers into the mixture in a delayed reflex. But it's too late. The jar already plummeted to the bottom. Just on cue, Trish rushes back and yanks the jug from me. No, wait! I try to stop him, but cover my mouth, hoping to God I wasn't heard. Fuck! I am torn between just hiding or rushing after him, but I cannot leave the bunny to face the abuse alone. I simply walk out with a lively gait, trying to catch up to him, but I'm too late. Trish pours now a large serving, and the female wets her lips only to jolt up in surprise. Ooh! She gasps with her eyes wide open. This punch is really fucking strong! <laughs> oh, I love a nail so much! <laughs> I'm sure my face is white like a sheet, like a sheet of paper while Trish gives me a what-the-hell look. What did you do, you damn savages? No, no, I quite like it. Puts life back into my veins. The ancient she-wolf smiles and musters another sip. I'm not sure if she's actually enjoying it or not, but she puts on a brave smile. Seriously, you should have gotten rid of Trist a long time ago. That kit has an attitude problem. Trist is the bunny, right? Or is it the other one? How could it be the other one? Can you actually see him? He looks a bit underfed. Is he one of yours? Her question causes the two to exchange stumped looks. It's almost as if she's trying to derail and prevent further abuse. Don't you remember the meeting from a few days ago? Rennick brought a human into the village. A human? Here? Don't be silly. Are you quite sure it's not just a bunny with some horrible skin condition? She scoffs and, take another and takes another shallow sip of our overproof punch. A bunny? He's a bloody standing right there, a human in the flesh. Oh, so he is. But who would do such a thing? Rannick! Rannick did it! Darling, just let it go. At this point, it's like talking to a potted plant. 
I'm looking at Anel's peaceful yet sunny expression, and can't help but feel she's simply messing with them. Once Trish placed the punch onto the side cupboard, he returns to my side, observing the rotating chickens. Not that this little exchange wasn't amusing, but we need to return to the main business. Whether you like it or not, we need to send word to the outer packs. Being cautious is one thing, being caught unawares is another. Agreed. I have rather... I have rather, I'd rather have all the Alphas mobilized and ready should the situation in the North threaten our way of life. You're treading on... You're treading on dangerous ground, Rav, Eric. We've told you our position on the matter. If you keep ignoring our counsel, have to invoke the how and put your position into serious deliberation. Good. Do so. The chief shrugs, catching them by surprise. If you do, however, you'll bring all the Alphas right here where I want them. I can see the two elders exchange aggravated looks as they realize he has cornered them. Uncomfortable silence falls over the room, and I look to the bunny who disappears again into the pantry. He comes back with two small wooden boxes. They're beautifully decorated with floral and knot patterns, clearly holding something quite important. As he opens the lid on one of them, I immediately recognize the white salt crystals. I chuckle under my breath. I swear, if he calls me a lord one more time... Triss takes a pinch and carefully sprinkles it over the rotating poultry. You're strong-arming us yet again. What else did I expect? Two brutes without a shred of sense between them. The old female finally breaks the silence. Considering both me and Vithyr bled for our tribe in a war of your making, I see us as more of an authority on the matter than you could ever be. Quilt pushers. Politicians and diplomats eager to spill others' blood from the safety of their dens. If Vortigern decides to attack us, I want to be ready, not caught unawares like a stalked prey. I'm willing to concede that a full mobilization might not be in our best interest, but sending a warning out to other wolves is not a provocation. The bunny unlocks the other box, revealing some dried herbal mix. Again, he dusts the chickens with the blend, and I smile with satisfaction at the, at the immediate aroma enveloping the room. The smell is quite divine, with small drizzles of fat dropping onto the fire below and empowering the scent permeating the air. You always find an excuse to get your way. Perhaps Rannick's little mission is part of your ploy to sideline us. Oh, Leviosa. Stop it, Ron. <laughs> oh, I love that. Alright. <clears throat> we should have demanded your pup's head for this atrocity. The hag waves her grubby paw at me, at me in a dismissive manner while the chief tenses up. He throws her the most murderous stare I've ever witnessed, and my heartbeat instantly skyrockets. The male looks more feral than when he was ready to kill me, yet the old fools don't seem to pay him any mind. Only an L seems to regard me, her eyes locking with mine and her ear twitching as if she picked up on my distress. Your father would have never... Well, he isn't around, now is he? The male growls viciously, his wet lips trembling with anger, revealing gritting fangs beneath them. I notice Vithyr place a paw on his friend's shoulder, trying to calm him down, but the chief brushes it away. When was, it? when was the last time you visited his name tree to meditate? Last time I needed to piss outdoors. <laughs> How dare dare you? Aldrich's sidekick rises up and slams his paws onto the table in another display of defiance. Who does he think he can intimidate here? Maybe me, but he would have no chance with a cheat or with a cheat or with a cheat or vithier. So much posturing. I almost sigh, noticing Anel continue to give me discreet gazes in this rare moment of her alertness. She looks back at the spectacle in front of us, simply closing her eyes in resignation. You're here to advise me in governance, not to poke your nose in my family's affairs. Last time you did so, I lost a loved one. I won't let you do this again. The male growls once more in a clear threat. The ancestors. If you mention the ancestors one more time, I shall make you one of them. If you ever threaten my family again, I will use your collective name trees as kindling on our next feast. This escalated quickly. The two elders look at him utterly stumped and quickly throw their gazes to the female on the other side of the room, clearly looking for support. But Anel is again back in her turper. Eyes closed and unmoving, almost as if she returned to the land of the dead. You're always profane and obscene, Varric, and you chose your company well. She darts her squinty eyes toward Vithyr. Pray your combined blasphemy doesn't anger the spirits. Now, with the sheltering this human, you'll have a lot to answer for when you're finally to face your their judgment. Failing, again, a failing memory seems to be a recurring motif here. Not that you would notice. The brown male scoffs in a nasty tone. I guess both his and Chief's patience ran out. Frizza made it clear that this is the will of the ancestors. You have no legs to stand on. The elders give me another round of their spiteful looks. 
Thuris says a young bitch barely passed our first heat. She does not speak for the ancestors. And I suppose you do. You think yourself witty, but in truth you just reveal your ignorance. We know half the ancestors you now worship. We shared this world with them. Yes, they just had the decency to leave it when their time came. I almost chuckle on that remark, trying to cough it off as my reaction to the smoke filling the room due to the fat dripping from the spit. The Blood Moon has anointed its champion, Varric. Do not think that Aluna forgives and forgets. You speak for her as well now. I suggest you keep away from my family. Rannick broke the law. And I'll break your jaw if you threaten him again. He clangs his cup against the table, spilling half its contents, and I shudder. Rannick's position seems to be very much hanging on a thread, and I try not to tear up. Try not to tear up. His father is the only thing that stands between my wolf and those bloodthirsty monsters. You must be joking. Do I look like a jester to you? I had hoped that my father taught you all what happens to those who don't stay in line. I warn you, Varric. Times change. You cannot threaten us all. You serve the tribe at our pleasure, and we can fight another should the need arise. All right, guys, I'm going to pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. This has been a new episode of Far Beyond the World. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!